Happy Palm Sunday to everybody. Hey, what a great day, huh? There's uh, churches streaming everywhere. Palm Sunday services all up there, all over there. I mean, everywhere. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's a good thing. I mean, we want to, we want to, we have an opposite, an, an awesome opportunity right now to really share the faith, man. And I pray that all of you are, are um, taking opportunities when you have them. Probably isn't a lot face to face anyway but certainly online and things like that um technology can be a big help but we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the book of matthew today and just look at some of the stuff that was going on 2000 years ago and how it impacts and affects us today with our churches and things like that so go ahead and grab your bible and join me in a word of prayer and father we lift this afternoon up to you right now lord that uh on this Palm Sunday, Father, that your spirit be with us, Father. Your spirit open our eyes and our ears and our hearts for the very message you have for all of us today, Lord. We praise you. We ask you to open your word to us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and dive into Matthew 21. We're getting to the very end of the book of Matthew now. Um, because this day... You know, this is uh, seven days to the resurrection, so um, there's not a lot left in the book of Matthew. But we're going to look at this one, starting in uh, Matthew 21, verse 1, and it goes like this. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her, with her, loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Now that's just the first part of this. This is the prophecy being fulfilled, and it's important that it was in there because you have to understand something as we're going in there and we're comparing then and today, that they were in a similar situation, so to speak. They, they weren't um, obviously suffering through a pandemic, but they were certainly suffering through an invasion of Rome and an occupation. And not a good one. Not you know, it wasn't a friendly thing that was going on there, like any occupation would be. So, you need to. We need to think about this as we're looking at things in the prophecy in the New Testament that are being fulfilled and they're being spoken of in the Bible. That these people, the vast majority, were well aware of what the prophecies were. They'd been taught since childhood, and so they would be looking for these things, just like we're looking. We're looking for vaccines, um, medications, things like that to help fight this virus. They too were looking. They were looking for their savior. They were looking for their king to come. And there was particular ways, particular things that they would look for. And this was one of them right here. And so aside from the fact that it was all cool that everything that Jesus said was going to happen happened and the disciples were obedient to go do this. Word spread, all right? And so this is kind of a triumphal entry of sort with uh, King writing in. And just so you know, it, it, Romans, the Roman triumph, triumphant, triumphals, they came in with these big, you know, black horses and chariots and, you know, thousand guys behind them all marching and everything and banners and, you know, the whole hoopla when they would come marching in. And so during this time, Pilate would have been, you know, coming in from his beach house and that would be on one side. And then over here, Jesus was coming in with uh, these people and he's, you know, riding this little doggy. Well, you know, just so you know, that wasn't that far off from Kingley, but I'll save that one for another day. Tonight, today, I just want to focus on the Passover and what was going on. So if you could put yourself in there. Look at it from their perspective. They're hearing of this king. And they're seeing 
the fulfillment of that, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey. And here he comes, right? And so the disciples went, verse 6, disciples went and did as commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set, set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. When the multitudes who went before those who were followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And, and the word Hosanna, as most we all know, means save now. And there, it's, a, it's not just a command, you know, like, hey, you need to, you know, save me. It's a, it's a proclamation to their king. Amen. So that what they're, they're saying is the king's here. Now, things will change. Now, the, the kingdom will be restored, so to speak. So, they're looking at this, I mean, from obviously joyful. They're joyful. But also, from a, a standpoint of being in need as well, because of the occupation of Rome, um, hungry being hungry finance yeah everything's just destroyed you know let me turn this thing down this has been you know torn down and they're seeing this as their moment yay we we're back so to speak and and it's it's a beautiful thing in on one hand that they're praising god they're believing his word they're believing the promise the prophecy they're receiving jesus as that king and they're calling to him to save them. And and that's cool. It's that's that's a, a beautiful act of the palm branches and the the show of um acknowledging him as king. Well, we're gonna keep right on moving here into verse ten. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So, going back to verse 10 for just a second, there's a really interesting word here I want you to catch. And said that he'd come into Jerusalem and all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Now, it could certainly everything was emotional. It was a very emotional time, as it would, just like it is now. It's emotional. We're fighting an enemy that we that seems like we can't beat, um, that seems to be everywhere. Um, that word moved um, is where where we get our word seismic from in the from the Greek. That it wasn't literally an earthquake. That's not what that means. What it means was kind of like you know, the city was shaking, man. It was humming. It was electric, man. There was something going on here. There's, you know, when the power of Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit, even now in our lives, and, and we, we need to be feeling that right now. We need to be feeling the quaking, and, and we need people to feel that, that electricity, man, that power of the Holy Spirit, and, and say to us, who is this? So that we can say, man, this is Jesus. This is, this is the Son of God, man. That's what's going on there. And then he immediately, upon coming in, he didn't go over to the Romans and, you know, start, you know, popping them. He went straight to the church, man, because he wasn't there to defeat Rome. He was there to defeat sin. That's what Jesus, that's why Jesus came. And so that might have been why some of them did a little side turn come up next Friday. Amen. <laughs> But anyway, that's another study too. He went straight to the temple and he cleaned house, man. He went in there and said, no, man, this is not what God's house is about. This should be a house of prayer. This should be a, a sanctuary for the lost and a place where the faithful gather and the saints are equipped with the word of God. This is where the shepherds will shepherd their sheep, man, and their flocks. And those that aren't he was bounced him out of there and we got to be careful we got to be careful of that today man that that everybody's got bills i can dig it all right i know we do too okay but we're not tripping on it we're not we're i'm not gonna say we're not we're not 
concerned. We we are obviously because we certainly you know have bills, but none of, we're not worried about it, man. Here's the thing: God built our church, not me, not us. We we might have hammered the nails, and we might have put up the pictures and stuff like that, but He built the church. And if he wants that church to be here when this madness is over, nothing is going to keep that church from being there. Amen. This thing right here, as I was reading this morning, man, just like hit me in the heart. And I was thinking, wow, I wonder how many places won't survive this, you know, because their motivation's a little bit too far to the mammon, so to speak. All right. And they're really freaking out right now. What are we going to do? How are we going to stay open? Oh, and they're, you know, going crazy and stuff. And it kind of, as I was thinking about that, I was like, man, we're having church right now. We're, we're not in the building down there on Benedict. All right. It's cool. I like it. I love it, actually. But this is the church, man. Us, together, our word. This is the church. We go stand in the park across the street my house. And we are at church, okay? It's the body, the body of believers, all right? <laughs> and for these guys, there was a lot of money being changed hands there and a lot of funny business going on with the animals and stuff like that. And so as Jesus was coming in, heading, heading to the cross, on the road to the cross, not today, but this week, he was making a way for God's people to have every opportunity to know him, receive him, and love him. And so, immediately, and there's a lot of immediately's here, right after all that, you can imagine the guys that were hanging out, they were freaking out, you know, they were flipping out, everything's, well, they were flipping, right? Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And that's what the temple's about, man. That's what church is. It, 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 it's not just about the blind and the lame, and I, and I understand what that's talking about there, but we we minister to blind and lame people all over the place. They're blind to the truth of Christ, and they're lame in their brain because they just can't believe that there's a God, man. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. What's going to happen next Sunday because of this moment, as the week progresses, next Sunday is going to be Resurrection Sunday. It's a Passover and it's the best thing that's happened to mankind since dirt clods started breathing. Hmm? Yeah. That's a that's one of the ones that makes you go, hmm. Anyway. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yeah, have you, have you never read out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. So there was two different Hosannas here. I don't know if you caught that. The first Hosanna, certainly, um, you know, the, maybe I did that devotional on adults and children and the difference between, you know, jaded, unjaded. And so we kind of had the first group that was praising God. Their king was finally here and they could, you know, get back to life again. And then we had this other group of children over here that were seeing these healings, salvations, uh, blindness, miracles happening. And they just started crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. And it was, it was a different thing, man. It was a different perspective on it. And Jesus was saying, out of the mouths of babes, perfection. Look, look what he said here. Let me open it back up for a second here. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. So, look, if you want to kind of get an idea on how to praise God well, and I've said this before, look to kids. Because kids have got such open hearts towards Christ they're so unaffected yet by the world and we have to be the ones to help them find that faith amen we have to and and so that means we have to be the ones to be an example of that kind of faith to our children our grandchildren 
new believers, you know, we have a lot of responsibility right now. And I think that this devotional, this section, this part of the Bible is going to be very telling in the coming months, you know, years, in fact, on how believers reacted to all this, how we are reacting right now. You know, history will tell the tale of where our faith really was. Not to say that, you know, you're going to fall away. That's not what I mean. But I think that we'll probably see when we're past this, and we will be past it, okay? The Humanity has suffered plagues many, many times. And this ain't the first, and it won't be the last, all right? But we're going to learn a lot how to deal with them for one but we're going to learn a lot about ourselves spiritually and how we handle our fear our anxiety our concerns about money our concerns about our health our families there's a lot of things that we may try to grab a hold of and hang on to them and and deal with them ourselves amen not that we shouldn't but we should go through what we're going to go through standing next to Jesus the whole way through this valley. Amen. I don't want to go through it alone. I'm prone to bad decisions. I am what I am. All right. This works a lot better for me. This is a fantastic roadmap to get through this thing. And no matter what happens throughout the course of this, I came into this thing with Jesus. I'm coming out the other side with Jesus. Amen. You guys have a beautiful day today. All right. Um, Enjoy your Palm Sunday. We're going to continue on through the month as uh, I shared yesterday. Speaking of the evidence of Christ, okay, as we're coming up on Easter, we will have our Passover service, okay? I don't know how yet. Um, generally, we go up on a mountain, very cold, very dark, um, very early, all right? Um, Probably won't be able to pull that off because we do need to look man. I know it's a drag But we have to stay apart right now just a little bit more man. We're close. Okay. I know it's hard I miss you guys like crazy man. I can you know what? I can't wait for a hug man because we're a huggy group of people and this is not working You know, I got a I got a body, you know one of them body bag things out in the garage and uh, periodically I just print out a picture from Facebook of some of you guys and I'll tape it on the body bag and I'll just walk up and hug it, you know, and then I'll tear it off and I'll find another one and tape it on there. And, you know, it just, I gotta tell you, man, it's, it's not the same. Um, but, you know, the bags, they're cold and emotionless. They just kind of, that's all they do, you know? So, but, you know, we improvise. We're doing the best we can to get through this thing. So we're going to get through it. All right. Very soon, soon and very soon, I'm going to see you, man. And I'm going to see you down there at the roadhouse. I can't wait. I'm, I'm anxious, amen. But until then, let's stay right here. Stay close. Keep in prayer. Stay close to your Father. Stay in contact with people. Pray for all that are in the fight on our behalf right now, you know. They need our prayers. The nurses. Um, doctors, care workers, and things like man, they are they are front line. You know, they're they're like D Day. They're they need all the prayer and support we can give them right now. So we're gonna continue to lift them up, and we're gonna make it through this. Okay, we will. I know it seems daunting. We're gonna get through it. All right, I love you guys. Um, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Hopefully, you know. Again. I am not the techie guy of the Roadhouse Biker Church, and I've clearly proven that throughout the course of these last couple of weeks, but they're still there. We're all still here. Amen. We're going to get through this. God bless you guys. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen.